Do you rev past 7,000 or 8,000? Are you making any power beyond that? I'm really surprised that this motor hasn't thrown any of the internal parts yet. It's hard to keep it under 7,000 on this motor. I think it has something to do with the uh, rear housing that I'm using. Yeah. This is it. This is the episode about... We'll come up with some kind of club or something. This is the all pressure switch. So that's what it looked like. <laughs> well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. How'd you guys like that uh, Honda Meet over by Lake Elsinore? That was pretty awesome, man. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we really enjoy going around and uh, the temperature is just about right. You know, a little bit hot, but Hey, it's Southern California. What do you expect, man? <laughs> anyway, uh, what I got going here, today's episode, is oil pressure. Uh, as you can see, I went and got one of those uh, glow shift oil pressure gauge. Uh, the reason behind this is I wanted to know exactly how much oil pressure I have. Remember what I'm using here is uh, OE oil pump. And I know some of you guys, you uh, either port and polish it and also uh, add some shims on the pressure regulator for the oil pump. But I didn't do anything of that. So I gave it a little bit of a thought because this motor, as you know, uh, it's revving past 7,000 RPM. And it's just something that I could not stop from doing going beyond that I think it has something to do with the uh, rear housing that I'm using yeah a friend of mine was telling me you have to slow it down it's either you put a, a longer gear transmission on there to slow it down a little some of you guys that uh, watched the episode about the uh, balance shaft delete I have mentioned something about I uh, am going to uh, do something that <laughs> We'll come up with some kind of club or something. And this is it, <laughs> right here. The club would be the 8,000 plus RPM, Rev to the Moon Club. <laughs> I'm really, really surprised that nothing has given up on this one as far as like the internal parts. But I'm really glad, I'm hoping it won't. But uh, I know I'm expecting that it will, but somehow, I never had any problem on this motor yet. Well, I should knock on wood. <laughs> but hopefully, I won't have to. But before that happened, I might as well just do some experiment a little bit. And yeah, uh, anyone that has a G23, whether it's turbocharged or naturally aspirated, um, May I make a comment? <laughs> How far do you take your engine? Do you rev past 7,000 or 8,000? Are you making any power beyond that? Uh, this one here, I was checking the dynograph and everything and well, it, the dynograph doesn't show 8,000 RPM but the, uh, it went up to 7,000 and yeah, it never showed where it falls off. But somehow, yeah, this motor just love to rev. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm using a smaller tires. And yeah, the transmission, the gearing that I have, is just enough to really spin that tire. Something like that. Or maybe it's just too light. And But yeah, uh, I never really have any problem with this motor. So back to the uh, oil pressure gauge. And this is what I have, a glow shift. And this is the parts that it was included, the brackets, two wirings here, and uh, 
what is this, the bezel? Yeah. And the switch. Yeah, I'm really surprised at uh, how small it is. And it works perfect for me. The size, this is 1.8 by 27 NPT. And from what they said, you could actually remove your OE, all pressure sensor, and uh, put this on with no problem. But since the F23 all pressure is right under the intake manifold, it's really way up high in there. So I'm not even going to bother. But I have a place where I can put this on behind it. But my idea is one of my subscribers will benefit on this one. As you saw me earlier that I removed the uh, the plug. This is the port where we put our oil pressure gauge to check the uh, oil pressure. If you have some VTEC system problem. Just to make sure that you have enough oil pressure flowing into the system. So I could not think of any better place other than this one right here. Since I'm talking about higher rpm i think this is the best place for me yeah and i have come up with a bracket i made this earlier i put a tabs on there that way it will hold the switch so it won't rotate on me well it won't because i'm going to tighten it all the way and i got a fitting and i'm reusing my uh flex hose because I needed to uh, to wrap it around here. I'm lucky that uh, I have enough room on there. And this is what I'm going to use. This is the fitting for my uh, wastegate. I think this should be okay. Man, I need to get one of those liquid uh, sealer. Should be enough. Okay, there it is. This one will insert here. I'm not sure if there's already a club existed. 8,000 plus RPM. Rev to the moon. Got everything all secured. Before I route this on there, I'm going to start it up. I want to make sure that it's not going to leak. You know, I should bleed it though. Yeah, get rid of the air. Good enough. 
got my wire all secured through the firewall right there and let me show you my other option if I were to put the pressure switch this is the area where I can also top it in right here this is uh, my teeth feeding this is for my uh, turbo oil feed right here and all pressure switch is all the way up on top of the uh, oil filter and man it's that would be hard to uh, put on there so right here all I need is disconnect this run my flex line and make another bracket and attach it right here right on the rear T bracket here's my connection all I did is just tapped in to my boost cage I just connect all the collars together Hey, hey! Of course, I think the reason why there's no uh, indication it's because of it's in the I ha I need to be at least four thousand RPM. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, it moved up, but I think it's gonna indicate uh, a lot of pressure when it goes to VTEC. So I have to be moving. So now we know that the uh, that port is not good for uh, using it on a turbo feed because you hardly uh, see any uh, oil pressure at all it's at zero so now we know that is no good okay well I'm gonna take it out for a run and see what my oil pressure is when I engage the VTEC system and after that I'm gonna remove it and I'm gonna move it underneath and then that will actually it should show the actual oil pressure I think underneath all the way out here so I'm gonna have to look it up later on well we know it worked I'm not sure how much pressure that is
We are back home. I thought I saw it pegs out here. And that is uh, 40, that is 60, maybe around 70 PSI. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it goes to about 70. Well, that was a successful run. We know that uh, all pressure pegs out at high RPM. So the conclusion on the experiment on this side, it's not a good idea to use that fork to feed the turbo system with oil. Yeah, it's a no-no. So that is solely just to check the oil pressure on your VTEC system. So now we know. I'm gonna wait till the engine cools down a bit. And uh, I still have to make a bracket where I can mount the sensor underneath. And I'm gonna use that uh, area and I'm gonna do it again. At least we'll see how much the oil pressure at idle. I think the uh, minimum is 10, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm going to check it again. And uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. I'll see you guys back. <laughs> 